Hey, this is JBugs and welcome to another episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Survival Guide. Today we're going to be starting off near the skeleton farm and from the noises in the background you might be able to guess what we're up to today. The plan is to build a spider farm that will give us string, spider eyes and of course XP. The first thing you're going to need to build this farm is to know where a spider spawner is. Luckily for me, I know exactly where one is. Once we've broken through the cobblestone wall into the dungeon, we want to put a torch as near to the spawner as possible to stop more spiders generating. We'll leave a one wide hole in the wall so spiders can't get to us and we'll be safe while we clear out the room. It's really important to say that the farm we're building is for spiders and not cave spiders. Cave spiders are much smaller so this design won't work as well for them as they'll get stuck. Once we're in the room, we'll light up the spawner with torches on either side and then can check out the loot. We got ourselves some diamond horse armour and a golden apple. We can then clear out the cobblestone. This isn't strictly needed, but I'd like to clear up the room that I'm going to build in. Spiders can spawn up to four blocks away from the spawner, which will give us a nine wide area that is diagonal in shape. Mobs will typically spawn near the centre of this area, but as spiders have a bad habit of climbing walls, I'm going to leave an extra block on the outside. I'll mark out where the walls will be with these stone blocks. We then need to dig this area down by a total of 7 blocks under the spawner. I like to dig a hole to the right depth and then place scaffolding in it. This lets us easily see where we need to get to without having to keep counting how many blocks down we are. Whilst clearing out the area for the spawn chamber, we'll also need to extend the walls right up to the ceiling. Once we've gone 7 blocks under the spawner, we'll then need to dig out the blocks on the bottom layer in the corners to make the bottom into a square. We'll then dig back diagonally another one block into each corner. This is so when we place the water, it flows to the right place. As we place the water in the far corners, you'll see that it flows to the middle leaving a diamond shape. The square in the middle of this will become the drop chute for the spiders, which we'll use to transport the mobs up to the kill chamber. We'll pop some buttons on the other blocks on the outside of this square to stop mob spawning there. Spiders are larger than one block, so they'll be too big to get stuck on those spots. To make life easier, I'm just going to use scaffolding to block the water back for now. I'll then dig the square in the middle down by two blocks. My plan is to connect the spawner to the same kill chamber that we use for the skeleton farm. I'm going to dig a too wide, too deep hole leading there. Eventually we'll fill in the top layer of this though. Once I've dug out this tunnel, I'll then place a water source in the far corner of the square drop chute we built earlier. At the end of where this flows to, we'll place a couple of buttons. We can then place down another bucket of water that'll flow to the end. We'll dig one more block into the wall to change the flow of the water. This will allow the spiders to move fully into the chute that will take them upwards. We'll then dig a two wide hole going all the way up to where the kill chamber will be. If you've been into the nether and have soul sand, it's really easy to transport the spiders upwards. All you need to do is block off the tunnel with a couple of buttons, place the soul sand in the floor, and then build a full water column going up to the ceiling which is 2x2. Two two. This will then turn into a bubble column that will move the spiders straight upwards. I haven't been into the nether yet, so instead of using soul sand, we'll place buttons diagonally opposite each other going upwards. So on each layer diagonally opposite each other, you'll have two blocks of water with two buttons in the spaces in between creating air blocks. This will allow the spiders to breathe as they move up the tunnel. One thing I didn't get quite right here was to build the chute so it came out right next to the hopper. The problem with this was that as hoppers aren't full blocks, items were getting stuck under the hopper. I should have had the chute surfacing a couple blocks over from where I did. I corrected this later though. Once all the water sources are in, we can then extend the skeleton kill chamber to be too wide. We'll then add in another hopper with a trapdoor on top. At the top of the water column, we'll also place in another water source. This should flow over the top of all the water that's there at the moment and push the spiders and loots so that they go towards the hoppers. If this area doesn't flood properly, you might need to waterlog one of the trapdoors. Once the water's then flowing properly, you can then remove this water again afterwards. At this point, the farm's almost done. The last thing we're going to do is fill in the top layer of the tunnel going towards the kill chamber and make sure the water is flowing properly down the tunnel. 
We can then remove the scaffolding that's holding back the water of the spawn chamber and make sure everything is pushing into the centre properly. We'll then remove most of the torches, leaving just one on the spawner itself. Once we've towered up and we're ready to turn the farm on, we can then remove the final torch. Now at this point, you should be done. For me, this was when I realised the chute was too close to the hopper, so I moved it over a bit. Hopefully you don't have to do that though and you can learn from my mistakes. The spiders should then start rolling in and you can kill these with a sword to get string, spider eyes and XP. And that's it, we're done with the spider farm. All we need to do now is hang around here a bit and collect all the loot and XP we want. That's it for today. Hopefully you've picked up some useful tips to help you make your own spider farm. I'd love to hear any comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like and see you again next time. Bye!